Hello again, everyone. I'm Dr. George Simon, and welcome to another edition of the new Character Matters program. This is the program where we talk about what I consider to be the defining issue of our time, the character crisis that we have been in for some time now, and that affects every aspect of our lives, from our political affairs to our community affairs to our individual relationships at work and at home, and most especially our intimate relationships. Things fall apart because we have lost the capacity to properly love and connect with one another. And that is largely what character is all about. Toward those ends, I've devoted most of my professional career to highlighting the problems that we face and what's really behind them. And most recently, I have written another book looking forward to what we must do to restore some sanity to our lives and to make character matter again. There have been many different periods in our history. In some of those periods, we more universally decided that character mattered and that it mattered a lot. And as a result, we devoted considerable time, energy, attention to fostering it through our various institutions and certain other endeavors. We carefully uh, tried to teach it at home, instill character in our children, but gradually, over time, insidiously, incrementally, certain values became corrupted. And in the process, our character, both individually and collectively, suffered. And as more and more character-impaired individuals populated our society, those remaining institutions and character-fostering programs and uh, structures that we had became increasingly defective. Gradually, we became a community of greatly impaired characters. And this affected every aspect of our lives. It's the reason things don't hold together. It's the reason our relationships are often so toxic and unhealthy. And they're, they're so impermanent that they don't hold together, that they don't foster growth as opposed to fostering much pain. And we have to turn this around. Many years of experience dealing with individuals who have experienced failed relationships impressed upon me quite firmly how important it is to have a certain level, a certain minimum level of character development before a relationship has a reasonable chance of succeeding, of lasting, of being a source of personal growth. But because of the nature of our times, and because we have largely failed ourselves and each other with respect to fostering character development early on and in the proper ways, Too many folks develop the character necessary to properly care for themselves and to properly care for another after too many failed relationships, after too much heartache, after too many personal failures, after too many errors, serious errors, many times in judgment. Now, I 
wrote my first books largely to call attention to the problems and the nature of the problems in relationships. My first book, In Sheep's Clothing, called attention to the nature of covert aggression and those characters that I call the most manipulative characters among us, the folks that know how to look good on the outside and who effectively cloak their true agendas in relationships, creating what is now commonly called the gaslighting effect, where you intuitively know that somebody's just not treating you right, that they're not behaving correctly, that they're trying to have their way with you or something to that effect. But because they are so skilled at the art of impression management, as we now call it, you doubt yourself and you feel a bit crazy. And then I wrote my book, Character Disturbance, to highlight the wide variety of character dysfunction that's out there. And especially what you can do to help ensure that you get the right kind of help when you're seeking help. And my book with Dr. Kathy Armistead, How Did We End Up Here? How to Recover from a Toxic Relationship, How to Determine When Somebody's Really uh, of the Kind of Character Where You're Not Going to Be Injured Again in the Future, How to Move On, Put Your Life Together Again After You've Been Wounded So Deeply, How to Understand What Happened to You. And uh, my book, The Judas Syndrome, about how faith can be a powerful vehicle for personal growth, genuine faith, that is. And my most recent book, it's been a true labor of love. It's a rewritten book, originally uh, an expansion of the Ten Commandments of Character that I first introduced in my book, Character Disturbance, and that I truly believe are the essential life lessons that we all need to learn and master and embrace in our hearts to begin turning around this insidious cultural nightmare that has fostered so much dysfunction and toxicity. And the main reason that I wrote Essentials for the Journey, embracing and living the Ten Commandments of Character, is because I know from ample experience that when someone takes to heart some of the principles espoused in the book, that they can grow in character regardless of where they are in their personal journey, regardless of where they are in their level of personal development. Task is much harder as we get older and set in our ways. But it's not impossible. In my books and other writings, I've defined character in the past as largely that moral side of our personality. It's the way we tend to operate in a world that reflects uh, the solid embrace of proper ethics and values. But in a broader sense, what character really is, is about developing the capacity to love. First, you have to know what love really is. And then you have to have the heart to display it in your encounters. Now, there are many things that interfere with us developing the capacity and learning to love properly. Perhaps the most insidious among these 
are all of the different things that cleverly masquerade as love, that appeal to some of our baser instincts, some of our more basic wants and needs. And so we're going to begin a discussion about that and about some of the prime culprits in the masquerade, some of the things that seem like love but aren't love. All too many people that I have counseled over the years have found out the hard way that what they truly believed was love at the outset of a relationship turned out to be something very, very different. But they didn't realize it until it was too late. And what they truly believed was their own capacity to love turned out to be something else. But they didn't realize it until it's too late. So on this program, I want to begin a series of, of programs that are going to take a look at this. Love has many different masquerades, many different imposters, not the least of which is attraction. Yes, folks in love experience tremendous attraction many times of various types and degrees. But attraction itself is not love. It's often an integral part of love, but it is not the same as love. Folks can be attracted for many, many different reasons. The reasons why people are drawn to each other are, are as varied as you can imagine. It'd be impossible to list all the reasons. But attraction alone is not love. As I mentioned earlier, it can certainly accompany it, but it is not love. The desire to connect is part of love. But love really is all about the quality of connection. And at an even deeper level, it is more about recognizing the inherent connection that we have to everyone and everything and being mindful about the quality of that connection. And it is the quality of that connection. It is the quality in the moment of how we connect to anyone or anything that determines whether or not we are truly operating in a loving manner. So in this age of narcissism, it's not uncommon for, for love to masquerade as desire. And this is how a lot of folks get trapped into relationships that sooner or later are destined to become abusive and exploitative. I've written several articles about this. I'll mention a couple of them uh, in just a moment. But on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com, that's D-R-G-E-O-R-G-E-S-I-M-O-N.com, I've written several articles about how individuals at the outset of a relationship will, will mistake a narcissistic individual's intense desire for them as regard, equating desire itself or interest with love, figuring if he or she is so interested in me, if he or she desires me so badly, if he or she wants to be involved with me so desperately, they must love me. It seems like they are truly attracted to me, and that may really be true. But that does not signal regard which is the essence of love. A person can have intense desires 
for you and intense needs and intense designs on you for a lot of reasons. They may even covet you to the point that they desire to possess you. And that will certainly show up at some point when they begin treating you like a possession instead of someone to cherish and to help grow. Folks who desire you, who may want to possess you, may pull out all the stops to win your heart. They may say all the right things. They may do all the right things. The object, of course, is to win you over. But always the question in the background, especially in this day and age of impaired character, always the question lurking in the background is, are they worthy? Do they have the character to properly regard you, to treat you as you need and deserve to be treated, to be dedicated to your mutual welfare? That's always the question in relationships these days. But folks don't give that sufficient consideration. They mistake interest itself for regard. They mistake intense desire for genuine love. If loving were as simple as that, and if it were as easy as folks make it out to be, then we'd be living in a very, very, very different world. But in fact, it takes many folks a lifetime to even discern the nature of love, let alone develop the heart to demonstrate it, to live it, to be it. So as I mentioned earlier, this program is only a beginning of the discussion. One of the best ways to help discern what real love is, is to go through the process of weeding out what it truly isn't. And it is not synonymous with interest or desire. And it's certainly not synonymous with attraction. So I'll be having more to say about this in the next edition of the New Character Matters. And I hope you'll join me then. Until then, this is Dr. George Simon thanking you for tuning in and uh, hoping that you'll avail yourself of the numerous articles on my blog at drgeorgesimon.com. That's D-R-G-E-O-R-G-E-S-I-M-O-N.com. And my books, all available at Amazon. In Sheep's Clothing, Understanding and Dealing with Manipulative People, The Judas Syndrome, Character Disturbance, The Phenomenon of Our Age, How Did We End Up Here, and my latest offering, Essentials for the Journey, Embracing and Living the Ten Commandments of Character, Proven Principles for our emotional, psychological, and spiritual well-being. Thanks for tuning in. See you again next time.